Since 2022, the price of mortgages has skyrocketed, which has ruined a lot of investors' plans and left thousands of homeowners in a sticky situation. And it's not just the interest rate. The fees on new mortgages have gone absolutely through the roof. Why? Well, in this video, we'll summarize what has happened, explain why mortgages are so expensive and why those much hated fees might not actually be so bad. However, in order to understand all this, let me first explain exactly how mortgages work and what affects their price. By the way, our business buys more than 100 million pounds worth of property for time poor investors every year, and there's a link in the description. Anyway, when you borrow money, there's a cost to the bank of lending it to you. These costs are heavily influenced by the Bank of England's base rate, but other factors also play a role. For example, when you take out a fixed rate mortgage for say two years, the cost to the bank of lending you the money can change if the base rate changes during that time. That can leave them exposed because the amount they receive from you is fixed, meaning that if their costs increase, they could end up making a loss. This is where something called the swap market comes in. In a swap, the bank agrees with another financial institution to exchange the fixed interest payments they receive from you for a variable rate they receive in return. Essentially, they're transferring their risk to someone else. And that, of course, comes at a price. So let's say the cost to them for making the swap for two years is 4.66%, which is what it actually is on the day I'm recording this. They might then agree to lend to you for 5.66%, pocketing the 1% margin as their profit. So who sets these rates? Well, they're determined by the market's expectations of what the Bank of England base rate is likely to be over the term of the swap. Now, logically, you'd expect certainty over a longer period to cost more, but the market expects that rates will come down significantly in the three to five year time period, reducing the cost of a five year swap. This is why it's weirdly possible to borrow money for five years more cheaply than for two years at the moment. It also explains why mortgage rates change from week to week, even when the base rate remains the same. If expectations about future base rate moves change, it affects the cost of a swap and therefore changes the bank's cost of lending money to you. So that's how mortgages work, but why are they so expensive right now? Well, historically, lenders would make loans to you based on their cost of funding plus about 1% extra on top to cover all their expenses and leave a margin for profit. If they have limited appetite for lending, they'll increase this margin on top of their costs to effectively put borrowers off. And if they're worried about risks in the housing market, they'll increase their margin to compensate for the risk that some loans will go bad and end up not being repaid. Are either of these things happening now? Not at all. The only reason you pay such a high interest rate for a mortgage right now is that the Bank of England's base rate has rocketed over the last couple of years. This has pushed up lenders' cost of funding, as determined by swap rates, and therefore pushed up the cost of a mortgage to you. In fact, looking at swap rates, the rate of interest you pay on your mortgage should be even higher than it is right now. But this sudden increase in mortgage costs has caused lenders two big problems. The first is that potential borrowers are shocked by the price. They were used to borrowing money at a price starting with a two. So to see it now starting with a five or six is scary. And some people who aren't forced to borrow are deciding not to do it at all. This is bad news for lenders because, well, lending money is how they make money. The second problem is that even if people do want to borrow at these rates, they find themselves failing the rental stress tests that lenders have been required to put borrowers through since 2012. The higher the mortgage rates, the higher the rental income needs to be in order to support the same level of borrowing under the regulations. Again, this is a recipe for unhappy borrowers who might not want to do business at all. So what have the lenders decided to do? Well, remember, lenders have typically added a 1% margin on top of their cost of funding. But at many points over the last couple of years, if you'd stuck 1% on top of the lender's cost of financing, mortgage rates would have been close to 7%. This would have put borrowers off and led to even more people failing the stress test. So for both these reasons, it's in lenders' interests to keep the headline rate of interest artificially low. Now, they might not feel low, given that rates have gone up by so much, but they could, and maybe should, be even higher. Take this product from the lender Paragon, which allows you to borrow for two years for 4.9%. The two-year swap rate is around 4.6%, so that only gives them a margin of 0.3%, or 300 basis points if you want to impress people with fancy financial jargon. That's nowhere near the 1% they typically look for to cover their costs and make a profit. So what's going on? Well, this is where those nasty fees come in. In the case of this particular product, there's also a 3% fee, which, as this is over two years, adds an extra 1.5% to the annual cost of the loan. Over the past year, I've had countless messages from investors griping about these fees, and I'm not surprised. If you're used to paying a fixed fee of, say, £1,000, and then the next time you apply for a mortgage, you're faced with a fee of 5%, that's a giant difference. On a £200,000 mortgage, that 
that's £10,000. Literally 10 times more than you were paying before. But remember, this isn't lenders suddenly getting more greedy and profiteering. It's just an alternative to what would otherwise be an even higher interest rate. And once you get over the shock, you could argue that high fees are actually preferable to high rates. But why? Well, let's take a look at a current five-year fixed rate product from Paragon because it provides a neat comparison. With this product, you can borrow at 5.94% with no product fees, which based on a £150,000 loan leaves you making a monthly payment of £541.50. Alternatively, there's another product that allows you to borrow at 4.94%, a full 1% less on the interest rate, giving you a monthly payment of £617.50. But it comes with a 5% fee. Over the five years, this is exactly the same thing. You're taking 1% off the interest rate, but paying an equivalent of 1% fee every year instead. But the difference is that rather than paying out the fee as cash, you can add it to the loan. Effectively, this means that you're borrowing £157,500 rather than £150,000. You do end up paying interest on that higher amount, which costs you an extra £250 per year in interest, give or take. But the key thing is that as a result of adding the fee to the loan and accepting the lower interest rate, your monthly payments are lower by more than £100. This has three benefits. Firstly, you're more likely to pass the stress test based on the rent. To borrow £150,000 based on this particular lender's stress test on a five-year fix for a limited company, you'd need your annual rent to be at least £9,375. At the higher interest rate, it would need to be at least £11,250. That's a big difference, and it's purely due to rejigging the balance between interest rate and fee. Secondly, it obviously increases your cash flow. £100 extra in your pocket every month is a valuable thing. It gives you more of a buffer to cover unexpected expenses or more rental profit that you can roll into your next purchase. Remember, when all said and done, you end up in roughly the same position over the five years, but using a structure that puts you in a stronger month-to-month -month cash position can be beneficial. And thirdly, by adding the fee to the loan, its real value has the potential to be eroded over time, just like your mortgage itself. In other words, the £7,500 in our example that's added onto the loan will be worth less in five years than it is today due to inflation. Maybe not by much, but somewhat. If you'd instead paid it month by month in the form of a higher interest rate, that wouldn't happen. Remember, adding the fee to the loan does result in a slightly higher cost over the fixed term, but inflation will nibble away at the amount you owe and the ability to pass the stress test and protect your cash flow means it could easily be worth it. So at the moment, it's fair to say we've got the worst of both worlds. We've got higher interest rates than we've become used to and jarringly high fees. But the fees themselves aren't the problem. They're a symptom of the overall cost of borrowing going up so much. If you weren't paying the fee, you'd be paying an even higher interest rate. Once the dust has settled and rates have hopefully come down a bit, investors might, perhaps should, have been won over to paying fees in exchange for a lower rate for the three reasons I listed. And if you are taking out a mortgage right now, Take comfort. If your purchase works based on the total cost of borrowing today, it's likely to work even better in the future if rates come down as the markets expect. And the risk of costs spiking dramatically upwards and causing you problems is far smaller now than it has been over the past 14 years when rates were next to nothing. Everything we've talked about today is just one factor that you have to think about when taking out a mortgage. They are really, really complicated and it's easy to make a mistake costs you a lot of money. So watch this video next where I explain exactly how buy-to-let mortgages work and how to go about securing one.